transformer though is a very efficient machine it do has some losses in it so today's video is all about that so let's see what are the losses in the transformer so the very first loss is called as the iron or the core losses so this loss takes place in the core of the transformer so this is the core of the transformer and the losses which takes place in this part of the transformer is called as core or iron losses they are also called as the constant loss as these losses does not depend upon the current further this iron loss or core losses are also divided into two parts one is called as hysteresis loss and the other one is called as the eddy current then another type of loss is called as copper or ohmic losses now these losses takes place in the winding of the transformer the two windings the primary and the secondary winding which are made up of copper and the losses in them are called as copper or ohmic losses and these losses are variable in nature as they depend upon the current in the primary and secondary wind there is another loss which is called as stray losses and this stray losses arises due to leakage flux so now when current flows in the primary winding and the secondary winding and the flux which is produced it should actually flow in this magnetic path but some what happens sometimes there is flux which is produced which may not be flowing in the provided magnetic path instead it will be just leaked out and this flux is called as leakage flux so what does this flux do basically it interacts with all the different metallic part of the transformer like tank and it produces a small amount of eddy current and that results in the heating of the transformer and due to that the losses which are produced is called as stray loss there is one more type of loss which is called as dry electric losses and these occurs in the insulating part of the transformer like the insulation which we use between the windings the oil which is being used as a dielectric or an insulation so the losses which takes place in those parts are called as dielectric so in this video we will more focus on the two types which is the iron loss and the copper losses in detail and we shall see that what is the reason for these losses and how we can minimize these losses so let's see first iron loss as i have written here what is the equation of the total iron loss it is sum of the hysteresis loss which is represented as ph and the eddy current loss which is represented as p now let's see what is this hysteresis loss and what is this eddy current loss how they are produced and how we can minimize them so let's see the first hysteresis loss now what is the reason for hysteresis loss here it is written that magnetization and demagnetization of the core due to alternating flux in the core now the meaning here is that see as we know that we have the core and there is flux in the core and this flux which is there here is alternating in nature so this flux keeps changing its value from positive to negative and because of this alternating flux which is flowing in the core the core molecules get magnetized and for one cycle and it get demagnetized for the next half cycle so what happens due to this continuous magnetization and demagnetization of the core molecules the core starts to heat and because of this there is a one type of loss which takes place which is called as hysteresis loss the hysteresis loss is given by the expression as ph is equals to kh into bm raised to 1.6 into f into b where their kh represents the hysteresis coefficient and it depends upon the type of material which is used to make the core bm here is the maximum flux density f is the frequency of the flux and v here is the volume of the core so this is the equation for hysteresis loss now how can we minimize these losses minimization can takes place by using high graded core material like silicon steel with low hysteresis 
so if you are going to use a good material good core material like silicon steel then these losses these losses can be minimized because these type of material has a low hysteresis loop if the hysteresis see hysteresis loop is nothing but a loop between bh we also call it as bh curve between the magnetic field density versus magnetic field intensity so if any material which has a smaller or low hysteresis loop is a good material to make the core now let's his eddy current losses the reason for them is that due to the generation of eddy currents in the core which causes power loss now as i have already told that there is an alternating flux which is flowing in the core of the transformer this alternating flux will set up an alternating a small amount of alternating current this current is called as eddy current and because of this eddy current there will be power loss in the core and because of this the loss which takes place is called as eddy current loss the equation for eddy current loss is given as pe is equals to ke into bm square into f square into t square so here ke is the eddy current coefficient bm is the same as maximum flux density f is the same as frequency of the flux reversal and t here is the thickness of laminations that are used to make the core okay as we know that core is generally made up of thin laminations so the thickness of the lamination is represented here as t so based on this equation we can understand that how we can minimize these losses by establishing high resistance path using thin lamination if we reduce the thickness of the lamination then we can reduce the eddy current losses in the transformer so this is how we can reduce the core losses in the transformer now let's move to the another type of the losses that is the copper or ohmic losses so as we know that these losses takes place in the windings of the transformer and the reason for them is the power wasted in the form of i square r loss due to the resistance of the primary and the secondary winding so the total copper loss is given as i1 square r1 plus i2 square r2 where i1 and i2 are the primary and secondary winding currents and r1 and r2 are the primary and secondary winding resistance but usually we will represent the total copper loss in terms of primary winding or in terms of the secondary winding that means we will refer with respect to the primary side or with respect to the secondary side and calculate the total copper loss as we can see here the total copper loss is written separately for primary and the secondary wind but there is a way to write this in terms of with reference to primary or with reference to secondary wind let's see how to do that so as the equation is given here tot total copper loss is equals to i1 square r1 plus i2 square r2 we, or i'll take the i1 square outside so what i will get is r1 plus i2 divided by i1 whole square into r2 now let this equation can be written as i1 square into r1 plus now this factor this i2 by i1 is nothing but 1 by k which is the transformation ratio so this is because see we know the transformation ratio k is equals to n2 by n1 which is equals to e2 by e1 and it's the same as i1 by i2 so if i have to find out i2 by i1 i will be getting 1 by k. so this k equation is taken from this so the finally we were going to get i1 square into r1 plus r2 by k square and this further can be written as i1 square into r1 plus this whole thing i can write it as r2 dash and this full resistance can be written as i1 square into r01 so this will be the total copper loss which will be given as i1 square r01 when referred to the primary winding as you can see here 
the total copper loss is equals to I1 square R01 when referred to the prime dividing, where R01 is equals to R1 plus R2 dash, as you see, we have found out here, and R2 dash is nothing but R2 divided by K square. So R2 dash is equals to R2 divided by K square. Similarly, we can write the total copper loss when referred to secondary side of the transformer, which is written here as I2 square into R02, where R02 is equals to R2 plus R1 dash. And what is R1 dash? R1 dash is equals to K square into R. So now coming to the minimization of these losses, see as these losses basically occurs in the windings of the transformer, they can be reduced by reducing the resistance of the winding. So if we reduce the resistance, then I square R losses can be reduced. So overall, if I say the total losses in the transformer is the sum of core losses and the copper losses. So the same thing is given here in the form of an equation. Right? The total losses in the transformer is the sum of PI plus PCU. So that's all for today. Thank you so much for watching. Remember to work hard to see the magic. See you in the next one.